This is a brand new piece of equipment that every retro game collector needs in their arsenal. This is the cartridge reader from the Save the Hero Project out of Tokyo, Japan, a crowdfunded campaign aimed at preserving your retro game data. This device provides a convenient all-in-one solution for backing up your favorite cartridge-based games. So let's take a look at the cartridge reader and see if it's the all-in-one device we've been waiting for. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to Macho Nacho Productions. Today I am really excited to share with you a brand new open source cartridge reader that was designed and built in Japan. This aptly named device is called the Cartridge Reader and it comes from the folks over at the Save the Hero project. It was created and designed by an individual who goes by the name Sani and his wonderful team of contributors. The thing I really love about this device is that it is completely standalone, meaning you don't need to plug it into a computer or use any specialized software. This thing just needs to be powered and you're good to go. Now for those of you who don't know, a cart reader like this is primarily designed to copy game data, or as we like to say, dumping ROM data. And more importantly, backing up your save files. As I'm sure you know, many cartridge-based games utilize volatile memory to store save data, which requires a battery to maintain that data. As these cartridges age, the internal battery will eventually die, along with your save data. That's where a device like this comes in handy. This allows you to download your save data from the cartridge and store it on your computer or external hard drive, which utilizes non-volatile memory. This is a much safer medium for storage since it doesn't rely on a battery. Plus, it's always good to have backups. So as you can see, devices like this are a must for any retro gaming enthusiast who collects cartridge-based games. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna start off by giving you a quick overview of the cartridge reader. Then I'll demonstrate how to use it, go over the pros and cons, and of course, provide you with my overall thoughts. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of the cart reader itself. The first thing you'll notice are the three cartridge slots on the top and a single horizontally mounted one on the front. This device can accept Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and Nintendo 64 games. With this device, you can of course dump the ROM data and back up your save files for all of those consoles, and you can even load your save files to the original carts, even if they came from an emulation device such as the RG351MP. That's pretty cool. Now, another noticeable attribute is this really nice PCB color. In addition to this yellow variant, there are six other colors to choose from. Here on the right side of the unit, you'll notice there are four switches. Depending on the cartridge you want to read, you will need to have each switch oriented in a certain way. But don't worry, it's super easy and intuitive to operate, and I'll get into it a little bit later. On the other side, you have the power switch. And when powered on, you are greeted by a very lovely monochrome OLED display. Directly below the OLED are two control buttons to navigate the menu. The left one controls the selection cursor. Pressing once moves it down, and pressing it twice quickly moves it up. The right button is the select button. And towards the back is a micro USB port to power the unit. This barrel plug here is just a remnant of the original design and is not used at all. Speaking of which, you will need to supply your own power brick. I'm using an iPhone one, which seems to work just fine. The cart reader comes with a one gigabyte micro SD card with all the firmware and support files preloaded onto it and is probably even large enough to back up all your save files from your entire collection since those files tend to be extremely small. And speaking of the firmware, as I mentioned prior, this project is completely open source, which is fantastic. You can check out everything from the code to the PCB design over at Sony's GitHub page, which I'll have linked down in the video description. And lastly, I love all the small details everywhere on the device, from the logo on the PCB to the print on the acrylic cover. Aesthetically, I think this is a very good looking device. Okay, now that we've taken a tour around the cart reader, let me show you how easy it is to use and back up all your game data. So first things first, make sure you are plugged into power. Let's start with a Super Nintendo game and work our way towards the front of the unit where the Game Boy Reader is located. Before even turning the unit on, we need to read the small printed text right above the SNES cart reader. Remember the four switches on the side of the device? Well, this text tells you the position for each of those switches. You can see that it says 5V, CLK0, and CLK1. So moving over to the switches, we need to set the first one to 5V. 
we can leave the EEP switch off since it wasn't mentioned. We then need to turn on the CLK0 switch, and we need to turn on the CLK1 switch. Awesome, now we can turn the cart reader on. On the OLED display, we are greeted to the main menu where we can select the cartridge type we want to read. Since we're doing the Super Nintendo, navigate down to it by pressing the left button once, then select it by pressing the right button. Now we're asked to select the card type. There are a few oddball items here like the Satellaview and Repo carts, but since we got an authentic SNES cart, just select Super Nintendo. The next screen displays all the information of the cart, which is really neat. Now press any button. The next screen shows you a slew of options to choose from. Selecting the first one, Read ROM, will dump the game data to the SD card. Once completed, you can select Read Save. This will back up your save data to the SD card. And that's it, it's that easy. Now let me quickly show you how to do the same thing for all the other types of cartridges. It's very similar to what we just did for the Super Nintendo, but we do have to change the orientation of the switches, which is what I'll primarily focus on. Let's do the Sega Genesis next. With the console turned off, we can see that for Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive games, we need to set the power switch to 5 volts, and leave the other three switches in the off position since they are not mentioned. Now just insert the cartridge, turn the cart reader on, and you're off to the races. Just simply follow the menu just like we did for the Super Nintendo to dump the ROM data and to back up your save files. Next, let's do the Nintendo 64. Again, turn the cart reader off and read the text. We need to use 3 volts. And turn the EEP switch on and leave the other two switches off. Then insert the N64 cartridge and turn the cart reader on. And lastly, let's check the Game Boy reader. Now since we have a single reader for Game Boy Advance and regular Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, you need to make sure you are setting everything up correctly because they are different. Let's start with the Game Boy Advance first. You need to set the power switch to 3 volts with all the remaining switches turned off. Again, insert the game, turn it on, and you're all set. Regular Game Boy and Game Boy Color games are the same and need 5 volts with all the other switches turned off also. Again, just go through the menus to dump your data and back up your save files. So that is how you operate the cart reader for each of the different currently supported cartridges. It's really not that difficult at all thanks to having all the settings written right there on the device itself. Now you can take the micro SD card and connect it to your personal computer and you'll notice that there is a folder for each console that you dump the data from. All you need to do is copy these files onto your computer and you've officially backed up your game data and don't ever have to worry about losing it ever again. Great, so now that we're familiar with the functionality this device provides, let's go over the pros and cons. First, I think that it's great that this project is open source. With a project like this, having it open source leads to community-driven improvements that ensures the project will exist even if the original creator decides to step away from the project. To go along with that, it seems that there will actually be increased capability with other cartridge-based consoles such as the Sega Master System and Wonderswan as can be seen in the add-ons menu. If this compatibility mentioned in the add-on menu comes to fruition, this can truly become an all-in-one backup device. Speaking of which, as is, it has a pretty strong list of supported consoles. It even claims to support repo cards. I actually tested this out on my 30th anniversary Street Fighter 2 Repro from I Am 8-Bit, and it did indeed work, which is awesome. Probably one of the biggest pros is that this is a completely standalone product. There is no need to plug it into a computer to use it. Everything you need is right here in this tidy little package. A large part of it being able to stand alone is having a user interface. This brings me to the OLED display, which is really quite nice, and despite it being so small, it is surprisingly crystal clear, lending to its easy operation. Another thing that I think is really cool is that Sony utilized a very highly rated Japanese foundry to manufacture the main PCBs, which look beautiful. And lastly, this is just an overall very useful device. It gives you peace of mind by letting you back up your save data, and it's a useful tool to have when the inevitable time comes to change your save battery for your various cartridge-based games. Alright, now let's get into the cons, and there are just a few minor ones. 
The first one is cost. My particular unit cost about 12,800 yen, which is about $110. However, I opted to get the optional wood base, which added about 15 bucks. Another pretty big con is that it is actually not compatible with the Game Boy Camera. I was not able to download the photos, and I just got an error message when I tried to read it. I am curious if there are other obscure games or peripherals that are also not compatible. Now something that I wish was included would have been compatibility with NES carts. However, it does appear that additional consoles will be supported as can be seen in the add-ons menu, which does show NES as well as PC Engine, Sega Master System, Wonderswan, and Neo Geo Pocket. If these are included in the future, that would be incredible. One very minor con is that the buttons to operate the cart reader are quite small, so if you have big hands, pressing these buttons may not be the easiest. Again, this is just a very minor issue. And the last con is that all the cartridge slots, with the exception of the Game Boy one, really have a tight grip on the games. I'm hoping that this will loosen up over time, but currently it takes quite a bit of force to remove them. Alright, now I'm sure you are all wondering how you can get your hands on one of these cart readers. And at the moment, you unfortunately can't. Sonny is still fulfilling his Kickstarter orders, however I was able to speak with him and he is planning to launch an online store and sell these at retail in the springtime. So I highly recommend that you follow Sonny on Twitter for future updates on when these will go on sale. He is planning to have plenty of stock readily available, so it should be hopefully pretty easy to get one if you want it. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, see you all next Thursday.